All amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And Spain's COVID incidence rate has fallen for the first time in a while. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, Spain's COVID incidence rate has fallen for the first time in months. The cumulative incidence of registered cases of COVID has fallen for the first time in Spain since the sixth wave began to grow two and a half months ago. On Tuesday, it fell 91 points to 3,306.5 diagnoses per 100,000 inhabitants in the last 14 days. Time will tell whether this is a temporary dip or the beginning of a downward trend that marks the beginning of the end of this wave. Experts warn that the data collected, which is incomplete and not very homogeneous, does not allow for a very fine analysis of the figures reported daily by the communities. After an unprecedented explosion of diagnoses over Christmas, last week there was already a clear deceleration in the curve. This already hinted that a change in the trend was near, something that experts had been predicting for some time for the middle of this month. So finally, the COVID incidence rate here in Spain has fallen, as we saw for the first time in two and a half months. But unfortunately, still too early to know if this is the beginning of a new trend. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. and We can see that accumulated incidence rate sitting at 3,306. Hospital pressure is now very high at 15.2%, and there are just under 19,000 COVID patients hospitalized around the country. And ICU pressure at 23.7% is classified as high, and there are 2,243 COVID patients in ICU around Spain. Now, there was some good news yesterday for young people that are looking to move out of the family home, as the government yesterday approved its plan to help young people pay the rent. And as we can read here, Spain grants monthly aid to lure youths out of parents' homes. The Spanish government will pay 250 euros a month to low-income youths to help them cut the cord in a country where more and more young adults live with their parents because they cannot afford to rent. Housing Minister Raquel Sanchez told a news conference after the weekly cabinet meeting on Tuesday that starting this month, Spaniards under the age of 35 with an annual income below €24,318 can request the monthly subsidy to rent an apartment for two years. The subsidy is an important element so that housing prices stop being such a hurdle for youth emancipation, she said. Spain has one of the highest shares of young people living with their parents in Europe. As many as 55% of the 25-29 year olds in 2020, according to the latest official data, up by 6.5 percentage points since 2013. So there we go, the Spanish government offering aid to lure young people out of their parents' homes. So what are the requirements for young people to get access to this cash? Well, to access this aid, applicants must follow the following conditions. Be between 18 and 35 years of age. The beneficiaries must have an income, and this income from work and annual income may not exceed €24,318 gross per year, that is, three times the minimum salary. It will be an individual financial benefit, so it can also be applied for people who share rented accommodation. The rented dwelling must be the habitual residence of the person applying for the bono joven. The maximum amount of rent will be €600 Euro per month, although the autonomous communities will be able to increase this limit to 900 euros as they are responsible for managing this voucher. And if the applicant is in a dwelling where he or she pays rent for a room and not for the entire dwelling, the maximum amount must be 300 euros per month, which the autonomous communities may increase to 450 euros. So 250 euros a month to help young people pay the rent if they meet those conditions. And with the maximum amount of rent being set at 600 euros, not many people in Madrid and Barcelona are going to be able to take the government up on this offer. Now, keeping on the topic of accommodation, the Spanish government has also said that they are going to promote a new housing model. And as we can see here, collaborative housing, the new model of community living the government wants to promote. Neither a shared flat nor a private home, neither buying nor renting, co-housing or shared living. The collaborative housing model, with a long tradition in some northern European countries, has landed in Spain and is gradually gaining followers. The latest boost has come from the government, which on Tuesday approved a subsidy of up to 50% of the investment for the promoters of these collective property projects. Co-housing is at an embryonic stage in Spain, with barely 200 homes in different cooperatives, 
but it is becoming increasingly attractive for some groups such as the elderly who are the focus of the government's new aid. Collaborative housing is based on the concept of community living. Each resident has their own home but shares common areas, services and mutual support among neighbours. So collaborative housing, another big plan announced by the government yesterday, and huge subsidies available for the promoters of this type of housing. Now the name Novak Djokovic continues to make headlines here in Spain because the next big international tennis tournament is going to be held in Madrid. And the question is, will Djokovic be allowed to play here? And various press outlets are asking the question, can Djokovic play at the Mutua Madrid Open? These are the requirements for elite sportsmen and women to enter Spain. In recent weeks, the world of sport and politics have merged over the controversial Djokovic case. The tennis player's expulsion from Australia for entering the country without being vaccinated and therefore being considered a danger to society was only the beginning of a series of events that have kept the Serb at the centre of the controversy. After saying goodbye to the first Grand Slam of the season, Things got complicated for Djokovic when on Monday, France approved the compulsory vaccination to be able to compete in its territory. The world number one will not be able to play Roland Garros. This new setback has brought controversy to Spain, where the Mutua Madrid Open will be held from the 26th of April. Will Nolly be able to play? Unlike in countries such as Australia or France, Spain does not require full vaccination for elite athletes from anywhere in the world who need to enter the country to compete. So, there we go. Fairly clear what the rules are for elite sports people when it comes to competing here in Spain. However, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has weighed in on the debate and says that Djokovic must comply with the rules to play in Spain despite a PCR being enough for him. Spanish politicians have not resisted the temptation to stay out of the Djokovic soap opera. First, the Mayor of Madrid, José Luis Martínez Almeida, and then the President of the Government, Pedro Sánchez, who assured that if the tennis player wants to play at the Mutua Madrid Open, he will have to comply with the rules. Rules that, if you ask his Foreign Minister, José Manuel Álvarez, the Serb has complied with. You only have to go back to the images of the tennis player on the beaches of Marbella a few weeks before the tournament in Melbourne to know that Djokovic can enter Spain. The official website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs classifies that residents of the European Union, countries associated with the Schengen area, and other states with special characteristics such as the Vatican and Dora or Monaco, where Djokovic resides, may enter Spain under three conditions, vaccinations, COVID tests, or having passed the disease. These citizens do not therefore need compulsory vaccination as in the case of Australia. So again, totally clear that people like Djokovic can play tennis in Spain without any problems. So why is this article making headlines and why are politicians in this country talking about it? That's the question. And the reason, as we all know, is to make headlines because if politicians don't have their name in the headlines, they get worried. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Darren. What is the Spanish government doing about the fact that British nationals can only stay for a maximum of three months at a time and not allowed back again for another three months. If an individual relies on a pension, then residency is not an option. Yeah, Darren, thanks for the comment. And to be honest, I have absolutely no idea what the Spanish government is doing when it comes to that 90-day rule for British nationals here in Spain. In fact, anybody who doesn't belong to the European Union can only stay in this country for 90 days at a time, except Venezuelans who don't need a visa to get in. Unfortunately, the 90-day rule is a Schengen rule, so it is not unique to Spain. In fact, the only country in the European Union where Britons can stay longer than 90 days at a time is the Republic of Ireland. So will the Spanish government be able to change this rule and allow people from the UK to be able to spend more than 90 days down here at a time? I don't know. But in any case, I don't think it will happen anytime soon. One here from Richard. Stuart, how do I buy you a coffee or beer? Can you add a link, please? Just started my three months in Fregiliana. Cheers. Yeah, Richard, thanks for the comment, and I hope you are enjoying your time down there in Fregiliana, Malaga, a fantastic part of Spain. And thanks for your offer to buy me a coffee or a beer. And to do that, you go to the description section below the video, and you'll see a link, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Spain Speaks. One here from Wickler Walker, there is crime everywhere. I was mugged in Palma, but have been going to Nurka for 20 years and never had any problems. I still love both places. Yeah, Wickler, thanks for the comment and thanks to adding to the debate about crime here in Spain. We saw last week how somebody left the country because crime was too high in Nurka. We've had various people over the last week or so saying that Nurka isn't a bad place for crime. And you're right, crime can happen anywhere. It doesn't matter if you are here in Spain, if you are in Italy, France, the UK, Ireland, anywhere in the world, 
you can become a victim of crime, unfortunately. And when it comes to street crime here in Spain, especially in some of the more tourist areas like Madrid, Barcelona, Palma de Mallorca, Malaga City, you have to be careful and keep your wits about you. And it's always a good idea to try and blend in with the local population and not look like a tourist and stand out like a sore thumb. One here from Tom. Thanks, Stuart. We are coming to Spain from Edmonton, Alberta. Ben Almadena, Puerto de la Duquesa, and Marbella, February 3rd, for two months. Your vlogs are very helpful to watch and listen. Keep up the good work, Tom. Yeah, Tom, thanks for the comment. Glad you liked the videos, and I hope all goes well with your trip here to Spain in February. Now, I imagine that one of the main reasons you are coming is to escape that Canadian winter and get a little bit of that Andalusian sun on your body. So good luck, as I said, and enjoy. One here from La Cha. In the US, a line of RVs on the side of the road is a homeless encampment. Is that the case in Spain or just vacationers? Yeah, La Cha, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to that row of caravans that we see parked on the side of the road that you quite often see when I do my driving videos. And the answer is no, it is not a homeless encampment. There are not people living in those caravans. They just park them there because they're not allowed to park them outside their properties in the more residential areas here where I live. In fact, if you drive along that road in August, when a lot of Spanish people are on holidays, you don't see too many caravans. One here from Brady, in some autonomous communities, one must show an EU vaccine passport for indoor dining at bars and restaurants. Non-EU citizens in Spain are out of luck as they can't get the EU vaccine passport. The FCS form QR code for entry into Spain or the paper vaccination certificate from their country of origin are not accepted. We hope this situation changes for the better in the near future. Yeah, Brady, thanks for the comment. And the good news is that various autonomous communities have announced that they are going to scrap that vaccine passport for access to bars and restaurants. For example, Cantabria, and I think Catalonia is also planning to do so. So it's a bit of an inconvenience, I know, for people from outside the European Union that don't have an EU digital passport. But as I said, it might not be around for much longer. And finally, one here from Gusto Audio. Do you understand the difference between anti-vax and anti-mandate? Yeah, Gusto Audio, thanks for the comment. And let me see if I get it correct. A person who is anti-vax is against vaccines. And a person who is anti-mandate doesn't like rules. And basically that's what I don't understand because we live in a society that is held together by rules. Rules that keep us safe, rules that keep us out of trouble, and rules that help us get on with our neighbors. And the whole reason there are vaccine mandates is because the people that govern us think that it will keep us safe, or at least that's what I understand. And for me, the vaccine mandate or vaccine rule is no different than a job advertisement that says that you have to have a driver's license if you want to get the job. So anybody who doesn't have a driver's license can't apply. Or what about the rule that says if you want to drive a car, you have to wear a seatbelt. And again, that rule is in place because it might just save your life. And I'll repeat that just in case you didn't get it. It might just save your life. Now I could go on and on and on about the different rules that we have in society that are there to protect us. But I suppose you don't believe in those either. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.